lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Robinson. And now it's time for our Faithful Financial Moments with Sister Sharon Richard. This is Sharon Richard with your Faithful Financing Moments. One of the biggest obstacles that people face in managing their finances is prioritizing how to allocate their money toward expenses. I used to laugh at an old song's lyrics when, when, it, when they sang, Ain't Nothing Going On But The Rent. But while this song was trying to make the point about the struggles faced in meeting this important need, many of us make choices which threaten our ability to meet one of our most basic needs, 
a roof over our head. So often, people have told me that they've purchased some new items for their home or bought new shoes and, and now find themselves short of the funds needed to pay the rent or the mortgage. Their children have the latest sneakers and cell phones. They, they chose to eat out two to three times a week, which is more costly than eating in. Yet we all marvel at how our parents managed to do so much with so little. The answer really is quite simple. Our parents continued to talk to the Lord to gain his direction and used the wisdom he gave them to make choices. The rent or mortgage was a high priority, and most of the time we ate meals at home. Our mothers mastered the art of cooking meals that we enjoyed, filled us up, provided leftovers for us to feast on for several days, and all at a relatively low cost. In most cases, we didn't even realize that we had less money than others simply because our parents prioritized and always helped us to understand that we were not going to get everything that we asked for. We must all look for ways to manage our expenses so that we are able to meet our basic needs and save for the unexpected. It may be about making simple changes, such as turning off the lights in unoccupied rooms, turning down the heat at night, or bringing your lunch to work. Or perhaps there are more significant changes that you must make to reduce expenses. Whatever your need in this area, God will guide you if you seek his counsel. In James chapter 1, verse 5, we are told, If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. Make sure you're managing your costs to ensure basic needs are met and you are saving for your future. Even if you have not been doing it in the past, You can make minor adjustments today that will help you to begin to see improvement in your finances over time. A cost savings of just $3 a day improves your financial position by over $1,000 in a year. Seek God's advice on managing your expenses and make the changes that will improve your financial position. This is Sharon Richard with your Faithful Financing Moment. Up next, Nina Taylor with your Gospel News, followed by the Pastor's Corner with Elder Ernest Richard Jr., Apostle Irvin Whitlow, and company. Hi, I'm Nina Taylor, and here is your Gospel News. Gospel singer and composer Judith Christine McAllister. Her love for music was inspired by her mother, the pianist at their church. Soon McAllister began studying piano herself, a skill that clearly transferred over to her work as an adult as leader and later musical director at the West Angeles Church of God in Christ. After she founded her own label, Judah Music, McAllister released her debut album, Sin Judah First, in 2001, which followed two years later in 2003, Raise the Praise. Then in 2006, McAllister issued In His Presence. The eighth of ten siblings in the Winans family, C.C. Winans, born Priscilla Winans, became a prominent contemporary gospel artist through performances and recordings with her brother, B.B. As a duo, B.B. and C.C. proved to be commercially successful. Their first album, Lord Lift Us Up, was released on PTL in 1984. During their membership in the PTL Singers, the siblings moved to Sparrow Label and released five albums through the mid-90s, a period in which their success increased as they added more contemporary forms of production. Their biggest album, Different Lifestyles in 1991, topped Billboard gospel and R&B hip-hop charts, went platinum and won a Grammy. Two of its singles, Addictive Love and the Staples Singers cover, I'll Take You There, featuring Mavis Staples, also topped multiple Billboard genre charts. Shortly after, CeCe began 
began her solo career. Alone in His Presence in 1995 found her working her way back to traditional gospel, singing standards like Greatest Thy Faithfulness, Blessed Assurance, and I Surrender All. Everlasting Love in 1998, His Gift also in 1998, and Alabaster Box in 1999 cemented the singer's status as a top-tier gospel artist. By the end of the 90s, she had a handful of RIAA gold and platinum certifications, as well as eight Dove Awards to go with her Grammy. CC entered the following decade with a self-titled album, 2001, that concentrated on the adult contemporary in R&B market. The set also featured a duet with her brother Marvin on the stirring single, Bring Back the Days of Yay and Nye, beginning with Throne Room in 2003, Purified in 2005. Likewise, benefited from the arrangement after which CC moved to EMI Gospel for Thy Kingdom Come in 2008 and Songs of Emotional Healing in 2010. Between the latter two, BB and CC regrouped on the Malico label for the album Steel, another Grammy winner. Several years had passed and CC released another album, a period which included a stint as a judge on BET's singing competition Sunday Best. She returned with Let Them Fall in Love in 2017, on which she was joined by the Clark Sisters and Hezekiah Walker. We continue to celebrate Black Women's History Month with Sarah Boone. Born in 1832 as a slave in Craven County, North Carolina, Sarah Boone made her name by inventing the ironing board. Boone was a rarity during her time, a female African-American inventor. In her patent application, she wrote that the purpose of her invention was to produce a cheap, simple, convenient, and highly effective device adapted to be used for ironing sleeves and the bodies of ladies' garments. Prior to that time, most people ironed using a board of wood rested across a pair of chairs or tables. She was living in New Haven, Connecticut when her patent was granted in 1892. She died in 1904. Here's your top 10 gospel quartet albums in the U.S. Number 10, The Legendary Ingramettes with Take a Look in the Book. Number 9, Tim Woodson and the Heirs of Harmony with The Truth. I Got Victory from New Walk coming in at number 8. Number 7, Lord Say You Will from the Alabama Spirituals. Number six, The Gospel Hurricanes with On This Christian Journey. Number five, Deontay and New Direction with Sing Praises. Back to the Roots from the True Believers coming in at number four. The Process from Eternal Lighthouse Singers at number three. Number two from Keith Wonderboy Johnson and Josh Miles, Inspirational Project. And our new number one, Legendary Lighthouse Gospel Singers with Time is Closer Than You Think. I'm Nina Taylor reminding you to connect with me on all social media outlets and write me at thegospelnewswithnina at gmail.com. Now, let's get back to more great gospel music on this great station. Hello, I'm Nina Taylor, your Gospel News reporter, and you're listening to The Pastor's Corner with my friend, Elder Ernest Richard, on Elation Radio. And as always, you can join my good friend, Nina Taylor, along with with my wonderful love wife and sister, Darren. I'm Elder Ernest Richard here on the past this morning. I want to take time to thank each one of you for coming in and being with us today. God bless you. Heaven smiles upon you. I pray you had a blessed day. I look to you and look to the Lord to work in you, work with you, work through you, and work for you. Joining me always is my brother from another mother, none other than Apostle, Vice Apostle Irvin Whitlow. How are you, my brother? Well, the Lord bless you, my brother. We thank God that we have kept you just one more time. And we say welcome to the Pastor's Corner. We're excited that you're here with us. I believe that God is going to speak something to us tonight that's going to help us all. So I look forward to what the Lord is going to say and what he's going to do. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And also joining us, Chief Apostle Vincent L. Smith out of New Haven, Connecticut, Morning Star Church, over the volume of the book conference. How are you today, Chief Apostle? Man, I'm doing great. I got good news from the hospital. 
keep breathing on his own. Well, that's the uh, oh my soul and, and God is greatly to be praised. Yes, he Come is. On. Hallelujah. Some of you he may not understand. Chief Apostle's brother was in the hospital. They said he had contracted COVID-19, and they said it had gotten in his lung and caused great pain. And why am I telling this story when you're sitting right there? Chief Apostle, tell the story. You can tell it far better than I can. Well, no, you told it. All I want you to know. <laughs> All I, people, all I want people to know is, is that you don't have to get down unless you're going to get down in prayer and ask the Lord to turn the situation. Amen. So he, he, went in, he went in. He was fine. He contracted it while being in. Amen. But it uh, looked like he was on the way home. And then something went wrong during the night. But God has delivered once again. Amen. Amen. We're looking, we're looking for greater things to happen. Amen. And God is good. I feel yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. You know what? If we was in, a, if if we were on a television set, they'd have to go to commercial break because it would be a dance right about now. Right. Let's, let's, go ahead. Just excited now. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know, there is a lot of good news floating around, uh, you know, and of course, you know, the usual stuff, but we're going to get to that in a minute. Let's find out who else is with us. I do believe Sister Glenda Johnson said that she would make it her business to be with us. Have you made it to the show, my sister? Yes, I have. Praise God. Amen. Peace and blessings. God so good you. to have you. Now, uh, of course, we have to keep in prayer. Our dear sister, Kimmy Kim, uh, yet again, uh, things are trying to go awry for her, but to God be the glory. This, too, shall pass. God is going to get the victory. She may or may not be with us tonight. Probably not. Uh, just give her some time. But please, please, please keep her in prayer. This is an awesome woman of God. She's Fought through a lot of things over the last couple of years. And look what God is still doing. She's yet standing. You were about to say, Pastor Whitlow? No, I'm just saying, amen. We believe God for another miracle because he's yet a miracle worker despite what we see and what is going on. Amen. Amen. Say that. Well, tonight we are going to take a minute to uh, really just go over some different things. Because I'm We're still hearing stories of people wanting to commit suicide because of COVID-19, people who are battling through illnesses. We just got a victory report of one who came through, and there are others out there. And tonight we want to kind of just share our hearts with you. And God's going to lay so many different things on our spirits. So tonight you're going to hear a little bit of everything. But, you know, we had a a conversation earlier, uh, Apostle uh, Vice Apostle Whitlow and Chief Apostle Smith and I, and we kind of want to share something with you. And I'll ask uh, Vice Apostle Whitlow if he'll bring the scripture up. And usually one of them gives the opening dissertation because what I'm doing is inviting you who are watching me, and I'm asking you by social media to invite your friends. You're going to really want to be in on this discussion. But I'm going to ask Chief Apostle if he would open us up in prayer before we go anywhere because if God ain't in the midst, Ain't no sense to see this. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. We give you honor and glory. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in the midst of your people. And, Father, we thank you for every family, Lord God, that you're watching over in this pandemic. Father, we thank you that Lord God, you have uh, shown your hand in so many yeah. different ways, even during this virus. And so, Lord, we thank you right now, God, that you will continue to show your mercy, continue to show your grace, continue, Lord, oh God, to heal and deliver and bring yes, people God. home 
and Lord God, yeah. and let them continue to live and love their families. Lord God, we thank you tonight that you shall do great things even on this broadcast. And we bless you and give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 On, on tonight, our scripture reading will be Jeremiah chapter 8, beginning with verse 19 down through 22. And the word of the Lord says, Behold the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people, because of them that dwell in a far country. Is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanity? The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. Astonished men have taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? That is the reading of the word of the Lord on this evening. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and open us up. Well, I I tell you, there are so many things that are going on right now, so many things that we've heard about this week, the past few days. We are all familiar with this COVID-19 coronavirus. We've, We've heard of death numbers rising. We've heard of uh, unbelievable disasters around the country, Uh, not only around the country, but around the world. And and numbers have really become astronomical, if you will, in this day and time with this unfortunate disaster disease, this virus, Uh, so to the point that they said that 40% of the death toll is in New York area. Mm. I'm, 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 I'm looking at that and I'm saying that's a lot of death in one area. But then that doesn't include what's going on in these other cities. Some cities may not have but just a few deaths. Maybe a few. Some I, I believe that Hawaii had the very lowest number, and there are some other states that might have had up to maybe 20 deaths. But when you mm. get into some places, some states like Georgia that are uh, rapidly ap- approaching 12 to 1,500 deaths, uh, and 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 South Carolina rapidly approaching uh, 600 deaths, and uh, in other states, you start wondering what in the world. Is going on, and uh, and 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 we begin talking earlier about how much this is really affecting our economy. It's affecting our ability to function. And then we talked last week about uh, disastrous decisions when leaders mm-hmm. make decisions that aren't good. And we talked about how they were wanting to open up uh, the the non-essential businesses after they sent out stimulus checks, but they weren't opening up uh, the big things that we are concerned about, particularly uh, the courthouse or or the golf course. Uh, But they wanted to open up the hair salon, nail salon, uh, tattoo salon, barbershop, uh, the gym, uh, because they know these are places that people are going. Mind you, where there is no uh, no no uh, 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 remedy 
for this virus. There is no vaccine. There, no science has produced anything that will actually work. And though they are trying things, what they want are guinea pigs, if you will. And so we're looking at mm-hmm. all of this thing, and then we read this scripture, and I hear the Lord saying, listen to the cry of the people. They, they, they're yeah. in our country, and they want to know, Lord, where are you in all of this stuff? Now, now here's what's interesting. With all of that, with all that's going on with this pandemic, you don't hear a lot about crime right now. All you hear is mm-hmm. the numbers uh, that is taking place and how people are dying. And, and, and the, the church is sitting here saying, where is the Lord in the midst of all of this? Where is this king who we know, the, the king of glory? And, and then, then the Lord responds with this, why have they provoked me to anger with their graven My images God. and strange My vanities? Uh, what I'm mm. saying at is sometimes, Judgment comes because of how we mistreat God. Maybe Mm, this is God's way of saying, I need you to wake up, and I need you to refer to me as the God that I am, the Savior, the Eh? King that I am. Reverence me and respect me, and maybe you'll Mm. see some different results. And I'm not just talking about the world at large, but particularly his people, his body, we call the uh-huh. church. I'm going to stop right there so that uh, Chief Apostle can get in there. Well, when, we, when we look at this text tonight, and it said, hear the cry of my people, we're not just talking about tears. We're talking about the people are verbalizing unto God, Lord, what are you going to do? Or what is going to be done to get us out to turn around or to make better the situation that we're in? And it is sad that in 2020, the people are still crying, amen. And then we got we got this goofy fella who want to get on the TV and make jokes about shooting lights off, amen. Up in people, he get on the TV and he's making statements about things that he don't even know what he's talking about. Because he says one thing, and then the specialists come behind him and said, no, that can't happen. Here's what's going on. Let me tell you something. You've got to hear the cry of the people. People are still crying for face masks. People are still crying for respirators in the hospital. People are still crying. Amen. Want to know, do I have it or don't I have it? They don't even have enough tests to go around. Amen. So how there are some folks that's going to leave this earth never knowing whether they have it or not because they've never been tested. Amen. I want you to understand, somebody got to hear the cry of the people, and I believe we got the answer tonight of who's going to hear the cry. Amen. Amen. I appreciate you guys. Sister Glenda, do you want to add anything? And before you do, Sister Glenda, I know we have other callers on. If you take this time to identify yourself, those of you that are watching by way of social media, if you choose to join See the number behind 646 564 9842. We'd really love to hear you come in and share with us. Tonight, we're just trying to share. You know, normally we take time to teach, but tonight we want to hear the hearts of the people. And the people of each and every one of you listening, and those of you listening by way of Blog Talk Radio, Spotify Radio, iHeart Radio, or whatever. Whatever um, uh, outlet that you're listening, you know, and if you're not able to catch us by way of this broadcast, we want you to send your uh, responses to the Pastor's Corner. Go on Facebook and send your responses to the Pastor's Corner because we're interested in what you, what 
Get to sit in what's happening and. I want to ask whoever has the telephone with the extra conversation, if you'll please mute your phone. This is a live radio broadcast. We thank you and appreciate you. Sister Glenda, go ahead. Hey, praise God. Um, I, I just want to comment on the 40%, I think, I believe uh, someone said, uh, in New York. Uh, the 40, was it 40% of mm-hmm. uh, people... Um, did anybody hear about the crowded Hasidic funeral in Williamsburg that was coordinated Very and vaguely. approved by the New York Police Department? Mm-mm. Very vaguely. Mayor Bill de Blasio personally helped disperse a crowded Hasidic funeral in Williamsburg on Tuesday night sending thousands of mourners scattering on Bedford Avenue before issuing a stern warning on Twitter to the Jewish community and all communities. Okay. Um, it, it, it's, you know, and we wonder why New York has so many numbers. That was a crowded situation out there with that specific uh, And it was approved. But yet the mayor comes on and says, well, this can't happen again. But it was known that um, it was approved. So it, 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 it bothers me that one, is one, one, in one hand is being approved, and then the other hand they're, uh, they're uh, complaining about it. So uh-huh. uh, and then you say, okay, the rabbi, this was um, a prominent – Rabbi, so they couldn't cancel it. But if you ever get to see the footage of there, all those people that were out there, and we're talking about in a we're talking about a pandemic where they supposed to be um, so many feet away, it was a crowded situation. I'm wondering what the numbers are after after that situation. So, um, and then earlier. I'm sorry? I'm sorry. Go ahead. You go ahead. Oh, and then early in the month, people in Bedside was arrested for hanging out, uh, and it was like a group of 25 people, whereas this funeral, that was many people. So it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a mixed signal. Yeah, okay. Well, well you know what I'm saying? A people They, this, this. This funeral that happened in New York, as as was already stated, it was one of the high rabbis out of the out of the Orthodox Church, mm-hmm. and they they had some five hundred or more people that gathered up in the street for mm-hmm. his for his service. It made the mayor there so mad. He said, anybody else that does this is going to call for immediate arrest. Amen. And so what people are doing, I don't care, as the sister already said, I don't care if it was that. I don't care if it was the big priest, uh, uh, I mean the big rabbi, uh, of the Orthodox Temple, the, st- uh, the, the, the word is stay six feet from each other. The mm-hmm. word is we're in the midst of a pandemic. It's called coronavirus. You know all of this, so why put your people in jeopardy over somebody that died? Mm-hmm. Well, and how many uh, uh, and how many more how many more funerals will be forthcoming from your from your one act of ignorance? Mm. Because everybody else that's having a funeral, if you have that funeral home, you can't have a ten people. If you have it mm-hmm. at the graveyard, if you have it at the mm-hmm. graveyard. You can't have but 10 people, and everybody else got to stay in the car. So what made them say mm-hmm. they could have a gathering of 500 or more? 
All right. This was approved. This was approved. This this what they did was approved. So I don't know. Well, see, here's the problem. You can't approve for one and then tell everybody else they can only have a certain amount. Uh, right. In doing, you, you put these different individuals. You, the point is, coronavirus doesn't care if you're black, white, red, yellow, brown, purple, purple, whatever your case may be. Coronavirus is taking them out left and right. Now, I heard uh, Apostle Whitlock read the, the, the scripture in our hearing. And we see that uh, for those who are familiar with that particular passage of Scripture, the one thing, the question was asked, is there a bomb in Gilead? And I do want to go after that, but I want to say this also because I see a number of people coming on and joining us, and we thank you for joining us by way of faith live tonight. If you so desire to Share with us. Some of you I have reached out to by way of Facebook and sent you a message and asked you to come in and to join us. I really don't want to call names today because a lot of times a lot of these preachers that come on just want to be there, just want to be part of whatever's going on without recognition. And I'm going to respect that tonight. So all we're really saying is this. Primarily, asking if there's a bomb in Gilead is the same as saying, is God going to send a healing? Yet we have individuals. I'm going to throw one more at you guys. Whereas they had 500 gather in uh, Pennsylvania, they had a gathering down in North Carolina where people were coming to protest a lockdown. I, and the nurses and doctors and different individuals came up and lined up across the front the front uh, entrance of the hospital with their arms folded. I'm trying to figure out what are these people thinking? Where's their mindset? Here we have people who put their lives on the line. They go in, they have this pit in their stomach, not knowing if they've contracted this uh, virus or not. And I heard you say it, Chief Apostle Smith, not having enough uh, supplies to be able to do the testing so that we could find out who is uh, positive and who is it. I would say this, ladies and gentlemen, the last real big scare that we had, remember when AIDS first broke out and we were not sure about what was going on? This seems to have double that alarming rate right here with this pandemic that's going on. And then we got these foolish folk who, when the government says stay home, and all they're trying to do is just keep this thing at bay. If this virus can't move around because you, the carrier, won't stand still, if the virus can't go anywhere, eventually it has to die. It has a short lifespan. But as long as we are being stupid, and I'm talking about those who are protesting the lockdown, as long as we keep it, I know they want to work. They want to go make some money. Funds are running out. Their emergency funds are running out. They have very little food. They're not getting enough help from the government. And I do apologize in what I'm saying because the leadership that is handling this situation right here and right now is nothing short of meager. That's the best word I'm going to use without being insulting. Meager. That's pretty much what it is. And I'm not sure what the whole story is, but the one thing I know for sure, as we're dealing with this thing, we have to see this thing from a scriptural standpoint. Coronavirus did not just show up. Coronavirus didn't just bring out the, out the clear blue sky. There has right. to be a reason for God to allow this virus to be released. Go ahead. You about to say? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think there are so many things, again, to look at. I was, I was even troubled when I heard that there were so many bodies, so many dead bodies in New York that the funeral homes could not even Mm -hmm. some of them. And so they were in trucks that had no house, and it released the stench. I saw a video a a few days ago of caskets and bodies dumped everywhere in in Florida. And, 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 And so what I'm saying is, these numbers are rising, and people are not paying it much attention. And, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and people are wondering why are the people of faith uh, not, not coming together and, and, and whatnot. Because at this time, God is not calling his people to come together. If the truth be told, 
At this time, God is trying to get his people to himself. God is trying to get uh-huh. his people to a place where they call on him. Look, let me tell you something. Uh-huh. When, when trouble like this comes, God doesn't want to see how much faith you have. He don't, that's that's right. not the time he's looking for your faith. The t- this is the time he's looking to see who's going to call on him. Look at again. Mm. Behold the voice mm. of the cry of the daughter of my people because of them that dwell in a far country. Is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities? Look at what God says in this thing. He tells the prophet, he says, the harvest is past. The summer has ended. We are not saved. At the end of the day, God is saying the time that I gave the acceptable year where I was accepting mm. people to receive my salvation, they ignored it. They did not want it. Uh-huh. What is happening? We become a country that has been deco- become divided over faith. Watch this, because it's mm. not an interdenominational issue. It's a now an interfaith issue where we have now welcomed other gods. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Mm. But this country was not founded on other gods. This country was founded right. on the true living God, who we call Yahweh, who we call Yeshua, who we call the mm. Great I Am. Yeah, that's who we were founded mm. upon. But all of these other uh, 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 cults and sects mm. begin to develop their own belief system. And what they did is slowly they moved God to the back burner. And so now they yeah. don't want God in the schools. Now they don't want God in the courthouse. Now they don't want God mm. in the Pledge of Allegiance. Now they don't even want God in your mm. prayer because they have turned their yeah. back on. And now that the country is in this place, people are wanting to know where God And God is saying, where are you? Why can't I get you to mm. get on your knees and start repenting? The time I offered salvation. You didn't want it Now you want salvation And I'm laughing at your calamity Okay y'all think I'm crazy But it's in the word of God And so he said And then what God gets me Is God said For the hurt of the daughter of my people Am I hurt God said I'm hurting because you're hurting Mm. God said, I mean, mm-hmm. he said, astonished. He said look at all of this man He said why did it I can hear God Why did it have to come to this I can hear God mm. why, did I have, why did it have to come to this so, so, so right. now you sit here wondering, is there no healing available? Is there no bone? Mm. Is there not something that can make this better? Is there not a doctor somewhere? Uh-huh. Oh, there's plenty of doctors, but the, the right doctor ain't available because this is not a situation for science. This is not a situation for medicine. Let me go further. This is not a situation mm. for a pharmacist. This is not a situation for a witch right. doctor. Okay, y'all don't have to like me. This is a situation mm. that only God can handle, and God will only That's handle right. it when his people return to him. I hear him saying, if yes. you return to me, I will return to you. Okay, all right, all right. Amen. Go on, now. Talk to me. Amen. Talk to me. Amen. Let, let me say this before the next one comes up. I believe Apostle Beauty Cooper has come in, and I want to welcome her. And we do have other guests, and it's okay for you to announce yourself if you want to be part of the discussion so that we can include you. Otherwise, we're assuming you just want to sit and listen. So, Apostle Cooper, after you, I'll come back and check for other guests. Praise the Lord, everyone. Um, I, I just want you. to amen. I, I bless the Lord for everyone. Um, the, the, the couple of things that stood out to me as I'm listening is that the Lord is saying to me, he says, remember, I'm working it out for your good. I know it looks bad, okay? I know it looks bad to a lot of us. But the, what's going on is just the exposure of the cracks in the church, uh, and, and so we uh, are supposed to be paying attention to these cracks where we are weak in that, and we need to be focusing on strengthening those areas. Uh, what, what the enemy is doing is causing confusion. And so the, the cracks that we see is the confusion that's in the church. It's not about the world mm. right now. It's about the confusion. It's about these cracks. In the, in the church, the, and, and the enemy is so easily able to cause these distractions. The distractions mm-hmm. because of the cross, because we are not focused, uh, we are not uh, 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 unified as a body. And so um, uh, 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 
Yeah, they these things are bad. But God says this is not a work. You know, we complaining and we complain. He says, render unto Caesar what belongs mm. to Caesar, and unto mm. me what belongs to me. The church mm. is getting wrapped up in the wrong thing, and and mm-hmm. we're missing the the point of what what God is doing. And so what's going to have to happen if we don't get it together, a lot of us is going to be washed down the drain with some of the other folks that, mm. that y- y'all know what I'm saying? You're going to have to be, know, go out with, 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 with the team. I agree with this. Um, if I can, uh, 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 Apostle, uh, just please pardon me because we do have a number of people on the line. Uh, I believe uh, Apostle uh, William Thomas is also on the line, if I'm not mistaken. Sir, are you there? Apostle Thomas? Okay, you have to unmute yourself, my brother. And also, and uh, I'm not sure who else is there, but there are about nine of you on the line at the moment. You want to identify yourself and share with us? So if you, if you choose to remain quiet, just let us know you're there, and then we, we won't bother you if you don't want to say a word, because this is open discussion tonight, and we want to make sure that we include everybody. This ain't about Chief Apostle Smith or Vice Apostle Whitlow or myself or Sister Glenda or Sister Kimmy Kim. This is really, this pandemic, it, 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 I don't want to sit here and give the wrong impression, but people ought to be concerned about this thing. The church at large has its responsibility, and yes, God is going to deal with the church the way he needs to deal with the church. But I'm inclined to believe that the Bible crystal clearly says that it rains on the just as well as the unjust. And this this pandemic, whether it's a man-made virus that was launched by one of our enemies or it's something that God allowed to come into the atmosphere, the truth of the matter is whatever condition you are in, if it should find you and if it should take you out of here, what should be the main thing for you to think about is, is your life right with Christ? The scripture sat there and said that you're not saved. And I like what you said, Apostle Whitlow, but I want to throw something else out there. There are folk who don't know Jesus that say, uh, you know, uh, how come we're not saved? In other words, how come we have not been rescued? Well, the reason mm. why you haven't been rescued is because you've not done the main thing. You need the one main lifeline that should be available to you. We usually wait to the end of the show, but you're going to hear this all throughout the show because now you have to seriously take a good look at your life. Something that you cannot see is coming at you with such a brute mm. force is taking family members, and it's wearing other people down, and the doctors are baffled, and the scientists are baffled, and I'm looking at some of the world leaders around the country and the way they're handling the situation, and I'm giving praise to those who are making some smart decisions, and then I'm looking at the most powerful country in the world who seems to be in a funk for some strange reason that we can't seem to pull ourselves together. There is a reason why it's going down like that. Let me hold my thoughts for a minute. Uh, Apostle Thomas, are you there? Praise the Lord. God bless Bless you. you, Bless you, sir. Bless you. Peace and blessings, brother. Peace and blessings. Hallelujah. Bless you, sir. What's What's your take on this? Well, David said... In Psalm 11 and 3, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Mm -hmm. Apostle Paul told Bishop Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. Let them that name the Lord... Let them that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity because the Lord knows those that are his. And other uh-huh. words, the foundation, the foundation is not the four walls. The foundation is true faith in just who Jesus Christ is. Right? 
Come on. Keep that, that's our true faith. Our true faith is in who Jesus Christ is. Not the mm. name on the building or the building as a whole. This is about coming into a true saving knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. And these mm. are times where there's so much confusion because some say the stay home order is stay in the house. But you have leaders saying, come to worship. See, we posted yesterday, why are so many of us anxious to worship at the house of God, but not so anxious to worship at home? Mm, Come on. Because Jesus said in St. John 4, neither yet this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. Now, come on. A lot of things have not been implemented the right, the right way. When you say worship, worship to some people because they've been conditioned about the church being a monument and the church not being a movement. This condition, mm-hmm. when you say worship, the, the general law is 9 a.m., 10 a.m., or 11 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Talk, man. But the true oh, biblical connotation of worship is relationship with Christ. We can't have relationship with Thomas. Jehovah Hold unless on for we a have minute, relationship. Hold on for a minute, Apostle Thomas. Someone has, is trying to listen to the show and be on the phone at the same time. You have to record the phone so that we don't get that double feedback. Okay. And then when it's time for you to talk, let us know you're there. Come on, Apostle Thomas. I apologize. We were getting some feedback. No problem. No problem. No problem. In order for the world to come into a knowledge of a relationship with Jehovah, Yahweh, we must have relationship with Jesus. Two more, and I'm Uh going to Jesus said in St. John 10 and 9, I am the door. And by me, if mm. any man enter in, we're not talking about the door of the building. We're talking about the door of our heart. Right. Uh-huh. If any man shall enter in, he shall be saved. He shall go in and come out and find pasture. Then he said later in John 14, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come up unto the Father but by me. Okay. This is the time mm-hmm. where implementation mm-hmm. of the gospel is coming forth in its truest form in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So now we Amen. Amen. We have Amen. to be All productive right. during the pandemic. And I'm gonna leave it right there. All right. Amen. Now I hear voice. somebody saying, Amen. Who do we have there? Who do we have there? I hear the Amen. Who do we have? Okay. All right. Uh, Chief Apostle Vincent Smith. You you know. Yeah. You know, uh, Apostle Thomas took us on such a he he took he took the crooked path and made the straight. You right. Uh-huh. I want you to I want you to understand. Ever since the pandemic has come in, I've been sounding like a broken record. I've been telling everybody, I, 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 I feel for the sick. I feel for those families who have lost loved ones. But I agree with Apostle Cooper. I agree with Apostle Thomas. I agree with the apostles tonight. God is trying to talk to his church at this hour. Yes, he is. is I have never, I have never seen anything. Years ago, they were calling it the Big C, and everybody knows that's cancer. Way back in the day, they called it the Big C. They didn't even want to call the whole name. They were so scared of it, they called it the Big C. But the big C never closed all the stores. Come on. No. The, big, the big C never closed up schools. Mm. And God knows it definitely never closed up the church. Come on. That's mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Then, then some years later, and I got two I got two things to say about this. Then years later, AIDS came along and HIV. 
Uh-huh. Now, when that first came along, they were calling it the other cancer. Uh huh. Mm. When it first came out, they were calling it the other cancer. It wasn't until some, if y'all notice, they don't start talking about this stuff until somebody famous dies. Come mm. on now. When Rock Hudson died from AIDS, all of a sudden, it was the worst thing that had ever happened in the country. Amen. Mm-hmm. Then they Come started on. talking about AIDS and HIV with a passion. Why did Rock oh. Hudson have to die for them to start talking about it? Now, My here's goodness. where I'm going. Here's where I'm going with all this. Talk to me. If y'all know the truth about AIDS, <clears throat> AIDS did all of a sudden happen. AIDS did not come from the homosexual community. AIDS did not come AIDS from Africa or, uh, or, or, Europe, or Europe or somewhere. AIDS was released in the Vietnam War. Mm. All right. It was chemical. It was chemical warfare. I, I, That's right. I don't have several, wow. several soldiers to die, so I ain't just throwing mm. out something. They said mm. what happened to the AIDS victims of of America and other places was already happening in Vietnam, but nobody wanted to talk about it. Mm. Of course. I want y'all to know that this that is going on now, you notice nobody has used the term airborne yet. Nope. But how in the world was this thing in China one week and in America in less than two weeks? There you go. And you get and you can talk about people flying in and out of countries. We ain't got that many people flying in and out of no countries that it spreads clean through America in less than a month. Yeah, you're right about that. Ain't that many Very people flying right. nowhere. What I'm saying tonight is that we have to stop being fooled by the reports on TV. We've got to stop being fooled by the reports on the radio. you got to dig deeper. And, and, and I, I said this in fun a little earlier, but I'm going to say it again tonight. If we're not going to preach the truth in the church, I might go join up with Farrakhan. At least he will, he's willing to tell it like it is. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank, I just want to say I want to say to all of us preachers, to all of us saints on the line tonight, if we're going to talk about the COVID-19, if we're going to talk about the cure, the real cure, one thing we got to do is stop pussyfooting around and tell the they truth have- that this thing is a governmental problem. Amen. That they can't control no longer. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right. But then, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they're talking about Corona so they're talking about Corona so much. Nobody's really talking about the three million jobless people. No, mm. sixteen million around the world. Sixteen million. Yeah. Mm. Sixteen million. And 16, world. I'm talking about in America. Three okay. million people don't have no jobs in America. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they don't, and for some reason, they keep running out of money to give folk a little check. Why? We claim we're the richest country in the world. So why are you running out of money to give somebody a check? Mm-hmm. There's a reason. When Canada, when Canada is going to give their people $2,000 to take three months, every citizen. My Not no stimulus check. They're giving every citizen two thousand dollars for the next three months to help survive, and our people can't get a dollar be twelve hundred dollars for one time. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here's mm-hmm. the other I want to add to that, and I do want to uh, say I do believe that Sister Nina Taylor, if you're still here, uh, I'm going to bring you up next. Uh, the one thing we got paid to, to that answer on the stimulus check, there's a report going around that people are having their stimulus check taken from them, literally stolen oh. from them in some cases, and taken by government uh, auxiliaries or government departments because it might be back child support, you know. And, I mean, to me, this is a sad thing. Oh, wow. These checks sustain the people until the economy gets back on its feet or at least right. provides some for people to be able to go and eat. But yet we have the IRS and all these different entities taking, literally taking money out the hands of these people. And, see, I want to say this also. It's funny that you, you mentioned the, the, the 3 million jobs in America, the 16 million jobs around the country. The meatpacking plants out in the Midwest have downsized and have practically closed, and in some cases they have closed. But now in their closing, uh, we're now getting ready to face something that was similar to what Joseph went through when he became the lieutenant governor of Egypt, when a famine struck the land. I'm not saying a famine is coming to America, but the idea that a famine could come is literally on the horizon. Now, I want to see how many wise people we have that are calling themselves the most high who are going to prepare themselves for what's about to come. The problem here, when we hear the scripture, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. The main reason they're destroyed for a lack of knowledge, yeah, I know God said he would supply your needs according to his riches and glory, but God also allowed summer, spring, winter, and fall to come. God also allowed, because of sin, certain things to happen. Beloved, we have to still prepare ourselves. It doesn't mean God doesn't love us. It simply means that we have to have a better sense in the spirit of what's going on. It's a funny thing. The birds know when it's winter time. They fly south. The fish know when it's winter time. The ones that are northern fish will stay up north, and the ones that need much warmer waters will migrate south. It's a funny thing that the animals in creation knows exactly when to move, but we who are supposed to be the most intelligent beings on the face of this earth seem to do the dumbest things you could come up with. Come on, somebody. Well, well, here's here's what I believe. What first of all, we we are a people who do not believe in wisdom. For the Bible tells us mm-hmm. that wisdom is a principal thing, and so we have a people mm-hmm. who don't believe wisdom is necessary. And so what we have done is we try to divide, de- determine things without the wisdom of God. And it is the foolishness mm-hmm. of the world that has destroyed many people. That's what it boils well, down to. But let me go a little further than that, if you will allow me. Uh, the Bible says that my uh, that where there is no vision, the mm. people perish. What yeah. I discovered is that we are dealing with leadership who have not heard from the Lord. Mm. And so when you when you're dealing with people who have not heard from the Lord, then all they go on is their instinct. And I must admit, instincts run out. And when mm-hmm. instincts run out, you sit there and try to figure what do you do. And then you go into um, to survival mode, which is that of an animal. And everybody knows that an animal does not have a mind. Come on, let's just be truthful. See, so, You're right. so when we ignore God, when we ignore his mm-hmm. ways, when we ignore his word, what we literally do is we invite the tragedy. We invite disaster. And we cannot get mm. mad at nobody. Can I be honest? We can't blame it on the devil. We blame the nothing mm. yes. on the devil. The truth be told okay. is there are choices that we have made that God is saying, now you have to live with. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29 and 10 that after... Seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I visit you and perform my good mm. word to you. Verse 11 says, for I know the thoughts that I think for you, therefore, Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. The problem is that people have been in Babylon so much that all they do is mm. talk a bunch of babble. Okay, let me help you. Babylon 
Babylon comes from the meaning of confusion. It means to get mixed up. And there are things that people, wait, help me, God. There are things that the church has been mixed up in. There are things that the world has been mixed up in. There are things that people have been mixed up in. And therefore, everybody's so mixed up that God is saying, I'm going to let you stay in your mix up until you get down on your knees and ask me to praise you. Oh, y'all don't hear me. God said, I'm so sick and tired of y'all running back. Every time God brought his people out, what they did get mixed up with something else. Lord, bring me out of this. Lord, deliver me from this. Lord, save me from this. Lord, save me. And then turn around and get right back up in that mix up. And God said, this time I'm going to let you sit your tail right there until you get the picture that we can't keep going back and forth. That's what's wrong. People have taken, wait a minute, the Bible said, thank you, uh, Paul, uh, Apostle Paul. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Too many people have uh, taken God's grace for liberty to license or to license uh, to sin. And God said, I didn't give you grace so you could sin. I gave you grace right. so that you could get your act together because where uh, sin did abound, grace did abound. And God is saying, look now, you're at the point where I'm about to let this grace run out and I'm going to let my mercy run out. And I'm going to the same love and grace and all that I have for you. I'm going to turn around and tear you apart. So I believe that we are in the season that one now is the judgment of this world and that's why we're seeing this crisis but at the same time I believe as Chief Apostle Smith would say God is doing some shaking God is saying I'm ready to see my glory I'm ready to see my sons I'm ready to see my daughters I'm ready to see the people that I have ordained to be a okay I'm not preaching I'm just talking about what I'm talking about he said I'm ready to see what I put in the earth Uh, wait a minute and then I heard I heard another bishop say that we're supposed to be the salt of the earth but the problem is we're sitting inside the container and we ain't been shaken to come out. There's a problem. We're supposed to be the light, but we hiding. Oh, God is saying, I'm tired mm-hmm. of what you're supposed to be, and you're doing what you're mm-hmm. not supposed to do. So let's get you into a mm-hmm. place where you have no choice. Okay, I'm going to quit talking before mm-hmm. I preach myself silly. Go on, talk to me. Uh, yeah. Let, let, let me yeah. get Sister Glenda here, and I'm going to come back to Chief Apostle uh, Smith. I know uh, uh, Apostle Thomas has left us. So come on, Chief Apostle uh, 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 Smith. You say you're going to Sister Glenda first. No, I'm going to Sister Glenda first. I did say that. Oh, oh, I'm, no, I, no comments. I'm good. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I, I was listening. I was listening closely at what Apostle Whitlow was just saying. Uh-huh. And if y'all if y'all would notice Romans chapter eight, uh-huh. eighteen and nineteen. Uh huh. For I reckon, for I reckon uh-huh. that the sufferings of this present time oh, are me. not worthy to be compared mm-hmm. with the glory which shall be, watch this word, revealed in us. Mm. Anytime oh. God want to take his people to another realm, there is uh-huh. some kind of, and I'm going to say it like this, there's some <laughs> kind of craziness that takes mm-hmm. off. Mm. Come on. But watch this. Now, we shall, we get happy about that 18th verse, but I want to hasten to the 19th verse. It says, mm-hmm. the earth said, the earth said, we're groaning and moaning, waiting, watch this other word, for the manifestation of the sons of God. All right. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Verse 18 says, there's something that's getting ready to be revealed. Verse Mm -hmm. 19 says, there's a manifestation that the whole earth is groaning, waiting to happen with who? The sons of God. The sons of God. God. I'm telling you, Cyrus came to shake up the church. I know it's shaking up. I know it's shaking up households. I know it's shaking up individuals, but mainly this Cyrus has come to shake up the church because this is the first time 
in my years of living, any pandemic has caused the church to come to a close. Amen. Mm. And I'm going to tell y'all the truth. I'm going to tell y'all the truth. There ain't but one person that got the authority to shut down the house. Come and that's on. the owner uh, of the house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because I'm telling you, just as much as the pandemic is killing folks, all this showboating, all this entertainment, mm-hmm. all this mm-hmm. foolishness, we done brought Free. into the temple, calling it church. Mm-hmm. It ain't nothing but mm-hmm. trash. Oh, Lord. And God said, let me send something to show the church how I mm-hmm. feel about what they doing. Mm-hmm. All right, now. Yeah. No, no. Go read your Bible. Go read your Bible. Don't listen to me. Go read your Bible. Every yes, time yes. he wanted to show Israel something, he gave them a demonstration. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. With a revelation. Isaiah didn't walk yes, around. Didn't. Isaiah didn't walk around naked because he was on a nudist camp. God was telling nope. Israel, "You're naked before me, and I know what That's you're doing." What and see, I, 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 let me add this to you. And I do want to say welcome to those of you who have joined us by way of social media. If you desire to uh, come in in these last 35 or 40 minutes, whatever we have left, you're welcome to do so. The number you see behind me, 646-564-9842, you can call in. For those of you that are listening to the podcast, We thank you for taking the time, for tuning in, wherever you may be listening. We pray that something is being shared with you. We're just doing a heart-to-heart tonight. Normally, we would do a teaching session, but today we want to do a heart-to-heart simply because of the fact that we're hearing the reports of people dying. We're hearing the reports of people getting sick, the reports of people trying to stay to protest for a lockdown. And I got to say this, too, while I'm talking out in the Midwest, um, There was a particular city out there in Iowa where there was a doctor literally on the uh, uh, on so uh, he wasn't on social media. He called a press conference and begged America to stay home. And the doctor, she was literally in tears. She was in an area that was pretty much ground zero for coronavirus. Now, because they began to reopen the country ahead of schedule and before time, they are now have like some 1,300 cases out there. Something else I want to point mm. out as well, a lot of people forgot in 1918 when the Spanish flu came through and they allowed the city of Philadelphia to open up. I can't remember the numbers exactly, but it was said that the number that died from the Spanish flu doubled from the first wave. So my thing yeah. is, how do we know this virus doesn't have a second way to it? No, we're not fearful. God hasn't given us the spirit of fear. God has given us a spirit of power, a spirit of love, yeah. and a sound and well-controlled and orderly mind. At the same time, God has given us a wisdom that A number one comes for him, and it comes and combines with our human wisdom to give us the common sense to recognize that if there's something, if they're saying stay home, stay home. Home. If you got to go to the grocery mm-hmm. store, we understand. You have to run to the doctors. We understand. The essential places you have to go, go. But the main thing is stop trying to go back to business as usual because it's never going to be business as usual. And for the body of Christ, I'm here to let you know if you read the book of Acts chapter 2, you'll find out that the church had all things in common. The church was actually birthed. I mean, it spilled out into the streets on the day of Pentecost, but there came a time where they were meeting in their different houses. We've only gone back to what used to be or what what should have been our future. God is taking away church as usual and giving us now unusual church. Now is the time, if you mm-hmm. love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, if you are in love with the Lord Jesus Christ and you have a heart's desire to minister in the ministry of reconciliation, now is the time to show it. Mm-hmm. You can't be in a building with 500 people and show your little with your cute little dress and your little Armani suit and your Rolex watch and your uh, spat shoes and whatever else you might have on, all right, put it away. Wear it at home. But right now is the time. You are now, if you're married, you're the prophet, priest, and king of your house, minister to your family. If you're single and you Mm -hmm. have children, get a hold of them. Find out where 
where they are. Find out what condition there is. Find out what they're thinking. If you're, oh, I ain't going to say that. I hope and pray that you're not. But if you're partnering with somebody, whether it's the same sex or opposite sex, start looking at your life. Because now mm-hmm. is the praying time, not the playing time. I do thank everybody mm-hmm. for coming on. It's 11.15 and, uh, uh, well, it's quarter after the hour, I should say. And there are some still coming in and, uh, and stopping in for a few minutes. All I'm simply saying to us is we have to wise up. Apostle Whitlow, you said it a little earlier. <clears throat> you said without vision, the people perish. I am looking, and I don't mind being home. I have no problem with it. But on a personal note, it would be nice to get out and go see some of my loved ones every now and then. It would be absolute nice. So what is it that we can't obey? What is it that we can't pay attention? And why are we sitting here acting like nothing is wrong uh, in terms of this coronavirus? Why are we pretending like it doesn't? Like those people in North Carolina that protested, uh, what are you going to do when those same doctors and nurses that you are yelling and screaming that have to take care of you? Now what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. Somebody want to pick mm-hmm. up the chair? Now, I got something, before we go any further, I got something that's coming over on the wire right now. Donald Trump is now fighting with the news media. Dude, can you find something else to do, please? You're supposed to be the leader of the greatest country there is, and all you've got time to do is pick a fight with the media? With the come media? Come on, man. Mm-hmm. All right, come on, uh, Apostle Whitlow. Listen. It, we're, 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 again, it just shows that we're, we're in a serious time. Look, here's, here's what we want people to understand. We're in a serious time where even the, the government don't care about your soul. I'm still looking at this thing. The harvest has passed. The summer is ended, and we are not and paid. We're not paid. I, still not paid. I, I, I'm looking at this because this is capturing my attention. Let me, let me read this again. It says, the harvest <laughs> passed. The summer has ended, and the gathering mm. of fruit is over, but we are not saved. We, we, mm. In other words, after all, after everything that they're trying, because normally, normally uh, something happens, it doesn't last too long. Because uh-huh. of what? Because of science, because of technology, because of medicine. But this thing has been going on almost two months or better. And daily, the numbers are rising. Daily. Mm. Think about right. that. And the Lord is saying, but my people aren't saved. My people aren't saved. Mm. Wait a minute. Why, why, why is these people not saved? Do they not want salvation? Because can I be honest with you? There is no salvation given under any other name than the name of Jesus. Jesus. So let, the me, name. let me say it. The Bible, let me tell you something. Matter of fact, uh, 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 Elder Richard, you talked about Acts, the second chapter. But when you read past the 38th verse, the 38th verse says, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus, every one of you, for the remission of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. When you go a little further down, it says, save yourself from this unto one generation. What God is saying is this comes a time when your life has to become more valuable than the next person. If you want to be saved, mm. you're going to have to make some changes. You have to start changing your direction. Matter of fact, this is the problem. People don't even understand what it means to repent. I'm going to go ahead and insert this, and if you get mm. mad at me, you get mad at me. Repent has never meant to turn around. Repent has always meant to change your direction and change your mm. attitude. To turn around simply right. says go back into what you've already been walking in. Mm. Oh, oh. Okay. See, people don't like that. Okay. If you stood up right now, if you're walking north right now and somebody said turn around, what you would do is you would go right back to where you started coming from. Oh, y'all don't want to mm. hear me. 
No, right. no. Uh, when you turn, uh, when when you when you repent, it's a complete change of direction. Now, with now, I'm not trying to be a teacher. I'm not trying to be elementary. But because I'm a preacher, I have to come on and say what I say. But when I was in school, I learned in uh, in mathematics, especially in fractions, that we have something called angles. Okay, and when we learned angles, we heard that there are three types of angles. We heard there's an acute angle, there's an obtuse angle and there is a right okay. angle and what I discovered okay. is that uh, an acute angle is anything from one degree to 89 degrees and an obtuse angle is anything from 90, from 91 to uh, 180 degrees but a right angle is 90 degrees which means a complete change of direction okay nobody don't like me Amen. right now so what God is saying is I don't need you to turn part way I need you to turn completely into another oh, direction oh my and then he said oh, I don't another, need you to look to the left or the right. I need you to change your direction, change your attitude, change your mind. Matter of fact, thank you, Holy Ghost. The Bible says that God is not, I'm not preaching, God is not slack concerning his promise as some do count it slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Mm. God is saying, I'm waiting on you to repent. I'm waiting on you to return. I repent. I'm waiting on you, black men. I'm waiting on you white man to repent. I'm waiting on you Chinese man to repent. I'm waiting on you African. Y'all don't hear me. God said, I'm waiting on you to repent. Mm. I'm waiting on you. think I'm going to do it for you? No. I'm waiting on every last one of you. I don't care yeah. if you Methodist. I don't care if you Episcopalian. I don't care right. if you're Baptist. I don't right. care if you're Pentecostal. I don't care if you're apostolic. Mm. I don't care if you're a junkie. I don't care if you're an alcoholic. I don't care if you're abusive. I don't care if you cuss. I don't uh. care if you smoke. I don't care if you masturbate. I don't care if you fornicate. God said, I need, I don't care if you practice witchcraft. God said, I need you to repent. I'm done talking. All right. Mm. Mm. Talk, 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 talk real good. Real good. All right. All right, so, now, so, you, 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 Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, Apostle. Keep you, you know, you know, uh, in all that Apostle Whitler just said, mm-hmm. if, you, if we would search the word of God over and over, God always used this term with his people. Return unto me. Mm-hmm. You're right. All right. The word now. Notice that word now. Return. We know the prefix re means to do over or do again. That's what it means. Take me back. So we know to take a turn means, as he already said, change direction. So if we're going to return, it means you got to leave something to return. That's right. You got you got to leave something. And I'm telling you tonight, we got to leave this thinking, thinking. We got to leave mm. all this competition. We got to leave all this arrogance in the pulpit. Mm. In the view, mm-hmm. talking about our mm-hmm. church is the best. There ain't but one church. That's, oh, that's right. One church. So how did your church become the best? How did your preacher become the best? There ain't but one church. If we can get that to be in the body of Christ and one church that was built on the rock of the statement that you are the Christ, the son that's of the right. living God, then we're going to see mm-hmm. Amen. Okay. I agree with that. Yeah. That's when we're going to see something. But all this foolishness we got going on right now, God is holding his nose saying, I wish they're going to take a bath or do something because this mm-hmm. they're doing now, it stinks in my nostrils. That's mm. exactly That's exactly and right. You and know, so you know what they had to do. You know what they had to do in Old Testament when they lit that table of incense and that smoke went round the table and not up before God. They had to clean the table and start over. That's mm-hmm. exactly what they had to do. Listen, because when that smoke, we're at the end right now. We're at the end right now, and we're gonna 
hold that thought process, and I do greatly appreciate everybody's participation. I just want to check one more time to see if there's anybody else on the line that needed or wanted to say anything before we start to wind this up and bring it in. Is there anybody that we missed or overlooked that came on to be with us tonight? Anybody at all? My my brother, my brother, my brother. Can you hear me? That's Pastor Wilkins. He can hear you fine. My brother, God bless Come you on. all. Thank you all for the discussion of what's going on and what you've been spoken about. I asked God a question two years ago. Mm-hmm. What is he going to do to bring us back? We've seen it gone so far away that we created another gender. We've gone so far away in the world that we've allowed children to determine what their sex is going to be. I said, God, mm-hmm. what are you going to have to do to bring us back to reset us? What are you going okay. to have to do in order to, to bring us back to this place where we find you? How did we get to a place called post-Christian age in a Christian mm-hmm. nation? Mm-hmm. How, how, did, how did we get to this place where we're no longer uh-huh. going after God? And I, right. I, I, I know the time is, is, is winding up, and I've enjoyed all that they've been saying. But I want to say one thing to us, brothers and sisters. There is nothing that we have to wait on for the rapture to come. Hmm. We, we, don't, we don't need no more signs right now. Jesus hmm. can come back at this very moment. The yeah. things have been so set in order and in line, and people have been put in place. The Jews are where they are supposed to be, and God is orchestrating mm-hmm. this in such a way, people God, we could be raptured up at any moment. But I want to know one thing. Are you ready for the rapture? Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bible question. says that if judgment begins at the house of God, now that means that he really is going to judge us. He's exposing mm-hmm. us, our craziness, <clears throat> our everything. In order to bring us back, like the, like the apostle just said, making us turn around and repent. Because the Bible, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says, as it was in the day of Noah, so shall it be in the, in the return of the Son of Man. That they were marrying and giving in marriage and knew not that the ju- until they knew not that God was bringing judgment until it came and took them away. Have we mm. asked God that we are right yet? Have we talked to God today? I'm not talking about having having a prayer meeting. I'm talking about what did you do? How did you talk to God? Did you find out if you were all right? Do you say, when you pray, ask God to give you every day direction. He said, every day ask him, give me my daily bread. But see, now he's Amen. not. See, we mix it up. We mix it up. Jesus get, made the devil understand this. The devil said to Jesus, if you're the son of God, turn these stones to bread. Jesus said, wait a minute. Let me make you understand something. My existence and my living is not by the, the stuff that satisfies my flesh, but every right. word that is out of the mouth of God. I have to fulfill right. the will of God everywhere. If God said we don't eat today, then that's what we're going to do, not eat today. What is God saying? Okay. What is God giving us direction to do? But I thank you all for just listening to me. Um, just well, saying a little bit. Don't but go, I, I don't enjoy the go away. Uh, your voice sounds familiar, and I don't want to call the wrong name. Who are we speaking to? Or who's speaking to us, should I say? Just now? Are you still, now, who are we speaking to? What's your, your name? Uh, Pastor Roger Wilkins. <laughs> I knew that's who it was. <laughs> I didn't want to say the wrong thing. Say hello to your brothers, Apostle Whitlow and uh, 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 Chief Apostle Smith. They I, all on the I've line. Been, I've been enjoying them. I've been sitting here just enjoying them preaching and ministering to me. I wanted to, to scream out a couple of times and say, preach, man. They seem to forget on this on this uh, podcast that nobody's going to pass the pad around and there's no <laughs> argument to be played. All right. You get a dead dent, but it's going to be 
in your heart. <laughs> but listen, <That's> right. <laughs> we have you on here, and uh, with my co-host, I'm going to ask uh, 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 Pastor Wilkins, uh, we normally at this time extend an invitation to salvation. I know this is your first time being with us, but we already know that you know how to invite them to come and receive Jesus Christ. I mean, you gave a good dissertation, you know, mm-hmm. and I like the song that a group commission sang years ago. Will you be ready when Jesus Will comes? Mm-hmm. So right. as I mm-hmm. probably play that in my mind, I'm going to ask that you take a moment to minister to those who are listening to us by way of this podcast as well as uh, Facebook Live. There might be somebody out there that's on the that's straddling on the fence. They don't know whether they they don't they're not sure where they need to be. So please, sir, from your heart, let the Lord use you and bring a soul in to Christ. Just take a minute to minister to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my God. Let me say this to you. Let us all say this. The Bible says there's no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. The Bible says that God has lifted his name above every name, that every spirit, every person, every principality, everyone in heaven, in earth, and under the earth will bow down to his name. So you know Mm -hmm. you're not getting into heaven except by the name of Jesus. But that's the good Mm -hmm. thing. Because it's because of his name, glory be to his name, that we're allowed to come to the throne of grace boldly. That's what this is all about, my brother and my sister. I don't care where you find yourself. I don't care where you – and I I need to say this too because, see, one of the things about this this coronavirus, it has made us individuals. People are dying in the hospital by themselves. Mm. You have to find Jesus for yourself, man. Oh, Sharma, you got to find him. And know that he's standing at the door of your heart asking you to open the door. I don't care what you where you I don't care what's going on with you. I don't care what what Mm. you what you've been with. I don't care who is standing next to you. Jesus is talking to you by yourself. I need you to understand that no matter what situation you find yourself surrendering to, I don't care what spirit's talking to you, I don't care what struggle going on inside of you. Jesus says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord, Osha, shall be saved. I'm not, I don't care where you are standing, my sister. I don't care what has gone on in your life. I don't care what you've been with. Done, smoke, drink. I don't care who you've been with. I don't care what their name is. I don't care if you got red, black, green, or yellow, or polka dotted hair. I don't care what you got uh, um, stuck in your chin, stuck in your eye, stuck in your ear. I don't care where you're going. If you call on Jesus, He will deliver you from any and everything. For He loved you so much that He died. To make you free The Bible says Amen. He that knew no sin Became sin for us That we may be the righteousness of God Ask you in this time Wherever you stand Wherever you are I don't care what you're going through Listen, sin is sin is sin is sin is sin is sin But Jesus' blood washes away All of our sins If you do yes. it If you ask the Lord to come into your life today And say, Lord I trust you. Let me tell you, brother, sister, you don't have to roll in the floor. You just need to believe him. That's all you need. Whoever calls on his name shall be saved. <laughs> just say, Jesus. You don't have to know any other words than that. I, I ask you now. You hear God talking to you now. You hear him speaking to your heart. Mm-hmm. And that, Lord Jesus, Jesus. I am sin, yeah. a sinner. But I believe that God raised you from the dead. I trust you as my Lord and Savior. I want you to come into my heart. And I will live for you for the rest of my life. I promise you this, my brother and my sister, it's that simple. You don't have to do nothing else. Mm -hmm. He don't have to do nothing else. He paid the price, and it's finished. And he will deliver you from every sin. Amen. 
No matter where you're born, no matter where you live, Jesus has come to save you. As many as receive him, to him he gave the right to become the children of God, even to them that believe on his name. Amen. Mm-hmm. Ask you, my brother, to receive Jesus in your life. And then I need you to call Amen. somebody and tell them, Jesus is the Lord of my life now. It's mm-hmm. necessary for you to tell somebody. It's necessary. And they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and the words of your testimony. I need you to tell somebody, Jesus has become Lord of my life. Tell yourself that first. Mm-hmm. Oh, Shama. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let, know that he is let, real and that will deliver yes. you, and that you have been delivered, my sister. That's all you have to do. You just ask him. He'll heal you from the hurt. He'll heal you from the mm. from the, 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 the dreams. He'll, he'll heal you from the past. He'll make you brand new. Bless yes. his holy name. Mm. Yes, Thank Lord. you, Lord, for doing it now. Thank you for hearing our mm. cry and our prayer. Thank you, God, for sending your men servants and your women servants that we may speak unto us tonight. Thank you for yes. every voice, every heart that hears us Offering them your life, your life that you're given for us, Lord, that they may receive life. We thank you for it now, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I, mean, I thank you, uh, Pastor Wilkes, Wilkins, for joining us. I do appreciate you coming in, and don't let this be your last time. Uh, we got to close. So, Sister Glenda, closing remarks. Uh, Chief Apostle Vincent Smith, right behind her. Apostle Whitlow, right behind him. And then I'll give the final say and benediction on this particular case. Thank God for each and every one of you joining us. And let me just be quiet because enough was said right there that we could just go on home and rest in him. Mm-hmm. Come on. Mm-hmm. Okay. My closing remarks is to reconcile back to God. Amen. 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 Right. All right. Well, my closer my closer remark says this. Amen. We got a lot of phony going on. But Jesus who is real. The Lord yes. bless you. Amen. My closing Amen. remarks are simple as this. Take heed to what the Lord is saying. Until next time, go with God, and he will, and he will go with you. Good night. All right. And again, I thank uh, Pastor Wilkins coming in and sharing with us. I thank those of you who, by social media, have spent the time to uh, be with us for this last hour and a half. Those of you that are listening to the podcast right now, no matter where you are, know that God loves you, and so do we. I Close with these given remarks. It is better, it, obedience is better than sacrifice because if you don't obey, sacrifice just might end up being you. I'm Elder Ernest mm. Richard Jr. This is the Pastor's Corner. As usual, we close with this saying as you go through the course of your work week, keep the pedal to the metal, the pep in your step, keep that glide in your stride, just enjoy life. So I keep the smoke in your throat, don't you jail it, life caused you to choke yesterday's history, forget about it, tomorrow's a mystery, stop worrying about it, live today as if it were your last, remind the devil he's defeated, Jesus Christ is still Lord, God is still in control, you have an anointing, you have a purpose and a destiny, and God, by way of the power of the Holy Ghost, is directing you exactly to that. If you let him. Sister Kimmy Kim, get the song ready. Don't forget to keep uh, Brother Charles Smith in, in prayer. Uh, God is recovering him and renewing him and bringing him back to those who have lost family members to coronavirus. Our condolences go out to you, to those who are in the hospital and are sick. Even if you're listening to us right now, the Bible says he sent his word and it healed them. Thank God that he, Jesus was wounded mm-hmm. for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, but by his stripes you are healed. I command mm-hmm. healing to meet you right where mm-hmm. you are now in the name mm-hmm. of Jesus. Until Elder then, Richard, Elder Richard, for the hey, before, you go, Elder yes, Richard hey, before you go, Elder Richard, before you go, Bishop, oh. Bishop, Bishop Jefferson, uh, uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, is on the line. Bishop, Bishop Jefferson, Jefferson, we can not close until we hear from you, sir. I enjoyed everything. God bless you all. Love all of you all. Thank you so much. Oh, come back here, troublemaker.
How you gonna come in and shake us up? And get, us, get back. <laughs> we love you, Bishop Enjoy. Jefferson. We really do. I'm gonna tell you now. Give us some information so people can join your broadcast. I'm gonna tell you honestly. I've been there a couple of times. You messed my day up the other week. I told you that, right? I told you I was sending the yes. FBI to your house and have a handcuff. Nobody should be preaching yes, that great. I love you all, and thank you for the fellowship, and keep us in prayer. Thank you so much. Well, give us some information. Uh, can we join your, your oh, well, broadcast? Every, every, we, uh, we come on every, uh, let me see, on my mind, every Sunday evening at 5 uh, p.m., we come on, direct number is 617-793-8161. That's a direct number every uh, Sunday at 5 p.m., and then on Tuesday and Thursday, same time, 7 p.m., uh, well, same number, 7 p.m. on Tuesday and Thursday. And uh, we're looking forward to having you all come and speak to us. Uh, apostles that spoke to us, we bring in different ones. The only one of our evangelists spoke this evening. So I don't try to do it all by myself. I always let someone else come in as far as and exhort the word to us. So I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you all and appreciate you all for the fellowship. And thank you for the uh, invitation to come on and be be part of you all also, Apostle Smith. I do got. I, I was going to ask some earlier, but I figured I would I would not say too much. But I want you to uh, look at a scripture for me. If you all if you would take in consideration for me, maybe the next time you come on, I, I was asked a question on in Exodus the thirty two thirty second chapter where. The scripture says, Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did you bring us out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? So they're they're asking God, Did you bring us out here in mischief to consume us? And then, he, then Moses said, Turn from my fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. So now Moses is telling the Lord that you all repent because of your wrath, what you're doing to us. And then Moses said in verse 13, Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy people, to whom thou swear by thy own self, and said unto them, I will multiply your seed in the stars of heaven, and all of this land, and I shall have spoken unto them, will I give unto you your seed, and they shall inherit. And then, here's here's my question. I want you to take into consideration, see if you'll talk this for me. Verse number 14, and the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. The question would ask mm-hmm. to me, why, after Moses questioned the Lord of his punishment and the mischief that he brought on his people, and then Moses uh, turned around and put the word back on God, God repented the evil that he'd done unto the people. And so the question was asked, during this plague or this pandemic, why is it that the saints can't cry out to God and ask God to stop this pandemic? On the earth. Mm. So, can you take that in consider take that in consideration and tell me what you come up with, Apostle? I, I'll call all right. You Thank you, sir. I love you all. I just want to throw that out there. I want to see what you all got to say about that. <laughs> all right, Bishop. Before you go, pray us out. Yes. Sister, can you get the song ready? Pray us out, sir. I, I meant to say it before oh. we had prayer. Please keep the Berno family in prayer. Deacon Amen. Chester Berno went home to be with the Lord. My Lord. Berno, Berno family, you said? Bordeaux. Yeah. Right. Bordeaux. Kind Father. All right. Kind Father, we thank you this evening and thank you for all your blessings that you bestowed upon us on this day. Now, Father, we have come to the end of this day. We thank you for your mercy, your grace, oh God, that you provided for us. And thank you, oh God, for the fellowship of the people of God tonight. And thank you for the opportunity, oh God, to speak and share your word tonight. Father, we ask you now, Lord, as we come to the end of the night, let your rest be upon us tonight. Protect us and let your angels, oh God, take charge over our, each one of our homes. Bless your people everywhere, Lord, and even those, oh God, that are grieving during this time and this period. We pray God's yes. special blessing upon the Bruno family in a special way, Lord. Touch, heal, and deliver, O oh God, as only you can. Now, Father, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to search our hearts. Father, if you see anything in us that should not be, Lord, we ask you to take away from For, O oh God, we want you to say, well done, thy good and faithful service. Get us all ready for the coming of you. We shall praise and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Love you all. Love you, too. Guys, have a great night. 
Come on.